So John and I have known each other for quite a few years now, I think about four or five years, and we regularly catch up just on uh, finance-based things. So just last week, we were catching up on a phone call, and we realized that there are so many people out there with so many questions in relation to the latest guidance from the government in relation to COVID-19. And there's a lot of uncertainty also with, um, with clients and what they do with things like pensions and investments. So we thought it would be a really good idea to jump on a call together and just go through some of those questions together. So I'm really pleased that John firstly agreed to that. So thank you, John. And also that um, you have also sent in some of your questions, which has been really helpful to allow us to prepare for that as well. So maybe you would just introduce yourself for a moment, John, to everybody who's watching in. Yeah, no, uh, John Sloan here. Uh, I'm a financial planner over at Navigator. I've uh, been working there for the past four years, um, deal a lot with business owners, business managers, uh, and, and helping them through their financial planning. Yes, yeah, so that's really interesting because I, I think even amongst my own clients, a financial plan is not something that a lot of people look at. So what are the advantages there to a financial plan, John? Well, a financial plan is, is really there to give you context about what your future life might look like in terms of how you want to spend. So we spend a lot of time looking um, and speaking about people and their their, their objectives, <clears throat> what they want to achieve with their life, both now and then both when they retire and then when they retire, what resources they can put to help to meet those objectives and the level of risk that they're comfortable taking. So we build a financial plan, a cash flow model, which shows the effect that if they keep on the same track now of saving and spending and earning, what will life look like? We also then factor into things such as, well, they want to go when they're 55, go on the holiday of a lifetime, or they want to send their kids to university and help them with their first houses. What, what impact will that have on their long-term future? Um, and, and the big thing is making sure that people live their lives and not have any regrets and not, and not, you know, not, not be sitting on their deathbed saying, you know, something up too much money. I wish I had a gone skiing when I was 79 or, you know, gone sailing around the world or something. We want people to have no regrets at the end of their life. And, that, and that's the long and short of it. So the big advantage of a financial plan is it gets you on a track to give you context about how life will look in terms of your finances. And a lot of that, as I say, is, is down to, to, to really exploring with our clients what they want to get out of life, both in terms of their work life and then their personal life as well. And I guess one of the things you mentioned there actually um, answers a big question, which I have asked you personally over the last few days, and that is, OK, there's so much uncertainty about it at the minute and people are reluctant to do anything at the minute. But, you know, what should people be doing with their current investments at the minute? What What is the right thing to do? Because I guess people just want to sit on their hands here and do very little. But is there something that people should be looking at if they do have investments there? Yeah. Well, the first thing to do is, is not to panic and uh, is to speak to somebody, speak to, you know, a financial advisor or a financial planner. Uh, and that, that's the most important thing is not to panic and don't make any rash decisions because it's at times like this that you need to, and you're absolutely right what you say there, it's set on your hands, don't do anything. And that's what we tell a lot of our clients to do. We're saying to them, listen, we know this is going to happen. And we spend a lot of time educating and working with clients. And we say, listen, we know that there are going to be times when the markets are going to be down. We know that it's going to happen. We just don't know when it's going to happen or how bad, but it will happen. And anybody tells you any different, is telling you a, a mistruth. So we, we spend a lot of time talking to our clients. In terms then of your investments, the best thing to do at the moment is to do nothing apart from speak to a, a financial professional. Have a chat, express your concerns, because it's, it's important to find out, well, what is going to be the long-term impact of this downturn in terms of your overall financial planning? So if you have somebody who has said, well, oh, <clears throat> I'm down 15% of my portfolio, I'm, think, I'm, going to, I'm just going to sell out now. Well, that person is, is considering turning a temporary loss, a temporary decline into a permanent loss because once, once you sell out of it, you're not getting that money back. Mm. Markets do go up and go down over time. And I'm just going to pull up a slide to show a couple of slides here to show you. And yeah, I'll, I'll share the please, screen please. with you. So this, I'm going to click share screen here. 
<clears throat> Hopefully it'll share. And share. So what you can see here is that this is this is how the markets look in the, the, over over time. And you'll see that you're gonna have wee peaks and wee troughs and wee peaks and troughs, but the general trend <clears throat> is an upward trend. Now, if we said with hindsight, how would you invest money over time? And you split this into three years. Well, some people would say, if I was gonna try and time the market, I would buy low and I would sell high. And then I would buy low and I would sell high and buy low. But the problem is that's very easy to do with hindsight. When looking back, we don't know when this is going to go down or when this is going to go up again. Uh, you know, we look back at when this whole coronavirus episode began, nobody could have predicted the impact that it was going to have uh, globally. Um, and then the, the impact on the economies and the impact on, on therefore the markets. So when we look back on this, we would say that, oh, well, we should have sold out somewhere like here and then it would have been grand, but that's only with the benefit of hindsight. And, and you know, that's the big thing. Hindsight's wonderful. And I was just showing you there, people buy here and sell here. What actually really happens is people, people buy low, then they buy high, then they're gonna sell high as well. People sell high or they'll sell low. Human nature just takes over. People don't, people don't use a rational approach to it sometimes. People will sell out when the markets are down, they'll buy when the markets are high. We don't know when the market's gonna change. So that's why we tell our clients, if you're investing any capital into the equity markets, you need to take a, a minimum, minimum five year time horizon of how that might turn out. You can access your money, fair enough, but if you need that money in the short term, we would tell them not to invest. So at the moment, what we're saying to everybody is, look, just as you're saying, Claire, sit tight. Uh, and you know, and the reason for that is if you think about, look at these three lines. So you've got the red one, the amber one, and the green one. Which portfolio would you invest into? I'm asking you a question there. Yeah, are you going to catch yeah. me? Yeah. yeah. Which one would I invest no, into? No, no, not, not, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Which portfolio one? would you invest into? The green, the green one. one. And that's, that, every, of course, everybody says that, but they're all the same portfolio. And the only difference is their time. So this is one month that you're going to see a bit of a drop down. A year could be level, but over the longer term, five years plus, as I've said, you're going to see that it's like, this you know so you're going to see an upward trend over time now there is there has been a, a market correction there but the way we look at it now is that when this is over people are still going to need to consume products people are going to need services and the companies that sell that are the companies we invest into so if you believe in the capital markets and how they perform over time we believe investing for the long term is still what you should be doing in terms of what you're doing now it's pretty much do nothing. You know, when you're here at the bottom of a market, this is a, this is a potentially a buying opportunity for some people. And I know that was one of your questions coming yeah. up, Claire. So sorry for, for, for yeah. preempting that. But this, 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 is, this is an opportunity because, and, and you have to look at that as well. This is a time whereby we can't say, I can't tell you that the markets are going to go up 15% in the next year. I don't know. I definitely don't know. What I can say is the markets are down from where they were and they have the potential to go back up. And then by the time you take on the income from those kind of investments, from your dividends, from your income payments, the, you know, and you're rolling that up over time, that's where you see a better investor experience over time. And it's not trying to chop and change things, it's just riding the market out, knowing that you're in there for a long time. And the biggest thing that you, you, know, you definitely just shouldn't panic. There's you know, panicking and worrying. That's what we're here for, we're here to help you worry um and do that bit for you um but to give you context in the long term of how this is going to impact your financial planning and i guess that's the key to having to having someone there who's looking after your portfolio is that you can you know if you need a chat on the phone come on and have that chat and just talk things out because sometimes just by talking things out you get the answer yourself but it's about having somebody there which is very important instead of trying to navigate that on your own um so Leading on from that, what about what about pensions then in the current market? How how is that going to affect someone's financial plan overall, or is it even going to affect it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, 
in terms then of what you have, you have pensions and your investments, your ICEs and your, your stocks and shares investments. So you hear things bandied about like bonds and pensions and ICEs. And effectively, those three things are just, they're just a different way of holding your money. They're a different way of holding your investment and they're just wrappers with their own different tax advantages. For business owners and, uh, and, and high-end business managers, et cetera, pensions are still a very attractive way attractive way of reducing corporation tax or you know getting the tax relief for somebody who's in a partnership if they're a high rate taxpayer you're getting tax relief on the way in and that's a very attractive way of planning for the future and um, so they still have their place and the big thing about it is is a lot of people now business owners are currently sitting on their hands with their cash at the moment because and and that's the right thing to do at the moment yeah. because they're worried about cash flow they're worried about their business in the short to medium term um, but down the line, there's going to be money there. Hopefully, when some businesses some businesses will fail here, hopefully very few do. But those businesses will then start to, to prosper again down the line. I fully believe that. And you know that's the time to start making more pension contributions for the tax reasons that you're you're very aware of anyway yourself, Claire. Um, and then to also help to prepare for your future lifestyle. You're funding your current lifestyle with your, your job and your work, and then it's about funding your future lifestyle as well. So pensions, you know, from a company point of view, are a brilliant way of reducing corporation tax and helping plan for your future. Um, in terms of where they're at now, it depends on the underlying investment and, and how that per investment's performing. So I would say that uh, most, if not all, pension funds are going to be down at the moment. So that's why you should always review. It's the same with any portfolio and any financial plan. You need to review that regularly to make sure that you're on track to document any changes to see what the impacts are going to be. So part of what we're doing at the moment is actually updating clients' financial plans and talking to them about what's happening, what's this impact going to be. Um, and I think, I think you know, it comes down to not doing a big lot with what you're doing at the moment yeah. uh, and just not panicking and talking. I think talking is the big thing. And whenever you say regularly there, how regular should somebody be be reviewing their, their financial plan or reviewing their pension? Depending, depending on the client. So the, the underlying investments should probably be reviewed at minimum once a year. But a lot of our clients or business owners, we see them twice a year. Um, and that's a, a twice a year meeting to talk about what changes have come about, how the performance of the investments is going, how the overall financial plan is working. Because your investments and your pensions and your life insurance and your cash savings, they are just what drives your financial plan. They drive it. But the big thing that you want to get to with your financial plan is meeting your objectives because that's the worst thing. If you don't, if, you know, if you don't have a fulfilled life, um, there's no point having all the money in the world. So yeah. making sure that you're on track, that we're helping with any changes, make sure that we're being tax efficient. So at least we say at least once a year, and for some people maybe twice a year. Some clients we see quarterly, some clients I speak to monthly. But like yourself, you know, it's 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 depending on that client and depending yeah. on that person and, and their own specific needs and circumstances. It's it's as it's, it's, it's as interactive as you want it to be. And and something you said there I picked up on was was how regularly we we both of us do speak with our clients. And over the last couple of weeks, especially, I'm I'm sure your phone has been going crazy too, but I have really noticed that business owners over the past couple of weeks have really stepped up the game to start being more aware of their finances. And I don't know if you've found that as well and on your side of the, the fence, but I have definitely noticed that people are more aware of what they're spending. People are a lot more careful. And therefore, it, it may be a good idea for those business owners at this stage to take that time out whenever they have a wee bit of time out of their regular routine to actually look at that and have, you know, have you even got a financial plan in place? Now might be the time to think about it because for those of us maybe who don't have a financial plan, well, it's all over the place now because of COVID-19. So, you know... I guess it's a time to just look back and also to look forward and see what we can be doing better going into the future because of this time that we're just standing still, as it were, in business and not much can happen in the terms in terms of new business, but certainly a lot can happen behind the scenes and how we plan now is how we're going to achieve in the future. So I find that really interesting that people are being so careful now with their money, yeah. with their staff costs, with their overheads. Um, and they're really driving those all down, which is what what people should have been doing all along, really. But 
yeah um, just don't get the time to review things like that um so yeah it, that, 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 it would be a good idea to, to look at all of that now yeah that, that's what we find with a lot of our clients you know they're that busy working in their business and they're working and, and you know they don't see big picture a lot of the time uh, you know initially when they come to meet us it's you know a lot of the time we see new new clients and it's oh i'm working in a business and things are going really well and i just don't have the time to do this and and that you know that's what we do we come in almost like uh, and we you know david in our office calls it being a personal cfo where we come in and we just look after your personal finance for you because let's be honest the sort of things that i do are what other people would do for themselves if they had the, the, the time to do it and they had the expertise to do it and they had the interest you know you had to have to want to do it as well and a lot of people say right i'm not too worried about that I need to make sure this order is going out. I need to make sure this delivery is going to happen. I need to make sure this service is provided. And then they sort of think, well, what happens to my own, to my own, to my own finances? You know, they're, they're that busy trying to drive the business on that, you know, they sort of take their eye off the ball. So, you no, know, definitely if, if people have time, it's, it's a brilliant time to take a bit of stock in terms of the business and how that's looking. And then in terms of their own personal finances. And, and I would say, you know, going through, and I wouldn't even look at one month, I would look at six months bank statements six months worth of bank statements and see where you notice money going out uh you know you take you add on netflix you add on maybe an unused gym membership you add on you maybe two takeaways a week and you're sort of like well hold on there's yeah. a few hundred quid that i could actually be putting to other use elsewhere the only thing i would be very careful of with people i would i wouldn't be telling people just you know in terms of direct debits and stuff obviously manage those but if you if there's something like uh, a life insurance premium that they're not sure about, definitely get in contact with somebody. Don't cancel that without having checked out what it is. Because um, yeah. I know at this time a lot of people might blanket and just cancel everything and then reset them if they need to. But it's just if you if you have life insurance things like that there, or if you're looking to amend pension contributions, have a chat with somebody and say, right, this is, I, I don't I'm not too sure what this is. Can you tell me um, what's what's the impact of I cancel this um, long term? You know, yeah. you don't want to be... No, you don't want to be caught on the back foot. And I think um, yeah. people, people, I guess, in my opinion, see the need more for, a, for an accountant than a financial advisor. But, you know, what, what you're saying is right. People are looking after their business finances day in, day out, looking at their business account. But I know for me, even personally, I do it all day for other people and at the you know whenever I come home at night I have no energy to do it for myself so therefore it is advisable to get somebody like an accountant for your business you know get get a financial yeah. advisor in for your personal for your for your personal items there and also for your business because I know that you help a lot of people with the likes of shareholder agreements and and, and things like that that they can look at so that's been really helpful yeah um both of us work with quite a lot of business owners and you have probably noticed over the last week or week and a half there's been a lot of recent announcements um coming from the yeah. government and the na executive as well um have you have you noticed you know is there anything in that legislation in relation to what you do has there been any changes made there in relation to what we do well it's it's good to see that there is support there for yeah business owners and, and for employees and then now now more recently the self-employed in terms of legislative changes on our side no we're not seeing a massive you know th this is more about keeping the economy going keeping people in jobs i would say you're probably feeling quite a lot of questions at the moment um you know but even at that we, we've had some clients contact us about just just as a backup to their accountant saying you know what do you know about this and yeah. you know obviously we're saying that's not our field and you need to speak to, to your accountant um and and you know i'm sure that you're getting questions about you know one of the questions i would have is if i am a if i'm a company director i'm an employee and i'm also taking my dividend what way is that work for the for furlough one at the moment then yeah so that that's something which i feel hasn't been tackled um not going to say tackled in the right way but it hasn't been tackled the way the self-employed have have been tackled by the government and by that what i mean is as a director of your own business there are things that you need to do in order to keep your company active so you can't just you know 
you can't just furlough yourself and sit at home and do nothing. Um, and it was something that I got clarification on last week. How does that apply to a company director? So let's say you're a director of a company, you're the only employee on the payroll. What, what benefit is there to you? So basically, as an employee director of your company, you're only allowed to carry out statutory duties while you're furloughed. So um, that's very, very limited. So I had a discussion with another accountant last night and we were, we were discussing this and we were thinking, you know, this, this might be about £1,800 worth of relief here if you get this 80% through of your three months salary. Uh -huh. And it really does take that person to weigh up, is this £1,800 better for me being sat at home, not being able to do very much other than fulfill the statutory duties, which would be your administration from a company point of view? Or is it better to yeah. forgo that and actually work on your business? During this uncertain time, work on new contracts, work on developing new relationships, try and get some kind of revenue out the other side. And we came to the agreement that it really does depend on the business. And um, for example, I have a client there who is a, a, a director of a company, a photography studio, and she's really struggling with the fact that, okay, she's got revenue coming in the door, but is she not even allowed to market her business then? You know, so yeah, that, that makes it a really difficult call. But unfortunately, what the legislation says is you can only claim the 80 percent of your salary. So nothing based on dividends. You can only reclaim the 80 percent of your salary alone if you're furloughed and if you're only performing statutory duties. So that's that's really where it sits in the eyes of, yeah. of, of the law. And it's not a great package, to be fair, because. A lot of company directors, as you know, will be taking a very minimum salary for tax purposes and they'll be popping up. Take the bigger dividend. dividend, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it leaves, it leaves them a bit short. Um, if, if you compare it to the self-employment package, you know, it really is a bit of a bad deal for them. I don't know if there's going to be any further announcements. I, I guess I can't say it at this stage. There doesn't seem to be much talk of it. But yeah, it's a bit of a raw deal for those um, directors who are sitting on the payroll of their own company and even worse mm -hmm. for those who aren't on the payroll of their own company and are just drawing um, yeah. lands down so yeah it's a difficult one so cash flow cash flow is going to be a big big thing at the moment and as i said that's what we see that's what we see with a lot of our clients or who are business owners they're sort of holding back on making pension contributions and rightly so because they want to get the, the business through the next few months have, have you any sort of tips in relation to or any guidance in relation to what they should be doing with cash flow to, to sort of maintain that during this time yeah so we have been advising clients to speak to everybody that they can all of their suppliers within their, their businesses um, we've had quite good success with some of our clients speaking to their finance companies so for example if they were um, leasing a car or paying off a car with a loan. We've had quite good success in relation to getting holidays there. Um, also speak to your landlord if you're renting premises and try to get some kind of agreement there, um, whether that be like we'll, we'll drop the rent in half for the, the next three months. But do have the conversation sooner rather than later because everybody's feeling this pinch. Even from a personal point of view, I would say, you know, there, there's lots that you could be doing and you've mentioned it already. Is there Netflix subscriptions? I know Netflix is important at the minute because what else are we going to do? But um, yep. are there payments there that are being made in the back, background that you don't even realize? So, yeah. get you know, print off your bank. That old gym okay. membership. Yeah, exactly. Um, have a look at what you can cut there your spending is going to be down because you're not out in the car, you're not um, socialising, you're not getting takeaways so much. So the spend is going to be down, but do speak to your mortgage company to see if you can get a mortgage holiday because that is Absolutely. available. Um, and contact lenders if you have other personal loans that are sitting there. So what I would say is from a company point of view, you, you, you know, you're going through all of your spend, you're trying to restrict that spend as much as possible, but don't forget to do it from your own personal end of things as well. Um, Absolutely. And guard against Absolutely, anything the, 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 coming out. Yeah, uh, that, that's it, you know, and, and you know, if you do have mortgages and loans and that, you know, definitely talk to people and don't let arrears build up. Um, and it's, it's, it's the same even for people who, or maybe renting our house, maybe, you know, rather than being a homeowner at the moment, yeah. you know, speak to a landlord to see, you know, if you are having problems, you know, have a chat, you, you know, you're far better 
facing up to some of these things and some of these tough decisions now, uh, rather than trying to you know sort of push them down the line because it'll only work out worse in the long term, in, in, in my exactly. opinion. Anyway, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of just standing up and saying, right, what prioritize things? That's, that's and you know what? Just prioritize things. Um, in a lot of cases, pride gets in the way, and I would say everybody's doing this now. Don't let pride get in the way. This is this is a good thing to do. Um, and there's also some guidance written into the legislation as well that means that you can't be thrown out of your home if you're a renter and you can't pay your your rent, you know, for the for the next yeah. few months. And bear in mind that the the rates letters will be coming out three months later than normal. So there there will be there are things happening in the background that you will start to notice as well. But also be proactive and start to go through those things yourself. Um, make yeah. the call sooner rather than later. Um, just going back to the, the reliefs a bit there, I've had a lot of questions. In fact, most of the questions have been around what support is available for those who pay rates. Um, uh -huh. There is a £10,000 automatic grant, which businesses are entitled to, but they must, um, yeah. they must be eligible for the small business rates relief. So do go and check your rates bill straight away and see if you are eligible for that that relief that you have been in the past. And if you are, um, if you pay your rates LBDD, you will automatically be getting access to that £10,000. If you don't pay your rates by DD, if you pay it once a year, you do have to contact Land and Property Services in order to get that £10,000 relief. And I'm happy to share that link below this video, just so that you can apply for that if needs be. The unfortunate thing is that it doesn't, it doesn't apply for those who have industrial buildings. So if you've got an industrial D rate discount, unfortunately that's not mentioned. It's only the small business rates relief that you will get the £10,000 grant for. There's also the 25000 for hospitality and tourism businesses, which is a great help because they are some of the clients that we have certainly seen who have been most affected because the cash just stops. They can't generate any income whatsoever. They've been told to close by the government. Um, and one of the questions actually was from a local girl whose father owns quite a few cafe restaurants across the country. And her question was, you know, how does this 80% of salaries work? How does this, this reimbursement work? So what happens is you process the employee's payroll as normal, as you, as you normally would. And it's a reimbursement which is made by HMRC and the portal in order to claim that reimbursement isn't actually open to the end of April. So there's a, there's a problem there, there's a gap. There's a month or so where you're going to have to have paid the wages to the staff and you, do, you don't receive the cash yet. So that is a big issue. And the Chancellor actually addressed that last week. And in his speech, he said that businesses should avail of the small business interruption interest-free loan um, it's a 12-month interest-free loan operated by a number of, um, of our UK banks. And I think the funding's gone through quite quickly for that, but there is going to be that, that gap for this reimbursement to come through from HMRC. So you're going to need to get the cash from elsewhere in the short term. Um, there's no application process. It, it will be reimbursed um, following information that you put into the client portal whenever that becomes available. So, right, okay, that's very good. So, the yeah. general advice is to to use what's out there, the support that's been given by the government, Absolutely. Uh, and and try it, try and you know, try 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 and use up those reliefs and and those those loans, etc. And what what's the twenty five k hospitality and tourism grant you mentioned there? Yeah, so we we don't have a lot of guidance on this, but there, all that we have been told is that the, the we have twenty five thousand pounds grant available to hospitality and tourism businesses. Um, we don't know how that's going to be paid to businesses yet. I think on the HMRC website, it just states something like details will be available soon. But they have oh. that out there that there's going to be this funding available, which is sorely needed for that industry. I mean, there's hotels. All over the country, there's bed and breakfast facilities, there's cafes, restaurants. And restaurants. Yeah. It's it's a it's a massive industry to be hit. And as I said, the likes of us, you know, we can we can rely on a bit of regular income, but those guys have nothing. Um, so the employees have re already done the work, and they still have to be paid. In most cases, um, today, the end of March. 
so yeah it's a big it's a big deal for those type of businesses um and also a big deal as of already as we've already spoken for those owner directors who maybe don't even have premises at all so they're not going to get very much relief from their 80 percent of their payroll and they're also not going to get a grant because they don't pay business rates so there are i i do believe that there are a portion of people who have been slightly forgotten about in all of this um and it would be great to see something come from the government, but I'm not. I'm not holding out for that at this point in time. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think. I think just whenever you know you're saying there about a lot of businesses and and hotels and B and Bs, uh, you know, and cafes and that. I think whenever this, there should be a very big effort to try and. And, and shop local for want of a better way of putting it you know and try and get out and try and get a wee bit of money pumping into the economy um to try you know because these are important industries to try and you know to bring money into the economy to provide jobs you know so i think it's important that when this all does settle down we all try and you know everybody's been very nice to one another let's just keep that going you know the, the support the one good thing about um what's been happening is is people are really banding together and it would be nice to see that for the business community down the line as well yeah Absolutely. And I think even for myself, um, who I've always been keen on shopping local, but I think from this all happened, you know, I do want to support those smaller butchers, grain grocers, um, local, you know, my local shop rather than going to the big chains. I, I really do want to support those guys because they have been going over and, you know, go, going over and beyond for their, for their customers in the last couple of weeks. So I think it is important that we do Whenever we come out the other side, we do really show our support to those guys. Holiday local, you know, if we can get a bit of yeah. salt, that would be good. But holiday local, buy local and, you know, try to try to make this wee country prosper again, which it will. Yeah, yeah, it will. You know, you know, you have to have faith that, you know, life always finds a way. You know, we're stealing a, a quote direct from Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. But, you know, <laughs> you know, things will get better over time. And from that business will get better as well and it's just a matter of supporting it and having faith in, 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 having faith in business having faith in the markets as well you know we're talking about overall even with your investments and things like that there people are going to still need to consume products and yeah. you know if we can do it locally it's 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 better but i think a lot of it's going to be down to keeping positive as well yeah and i and i would also say to people out there that you know, you might have an accountant, accountant and a, a financial advisor, but don't be forgetful to get the right contracts drawn up and all of this, because as we speak about furloughed workers, um, there is a bit of legality around that. So do make sure you have somebody get those contracts drawn up for you. I don't think it's a big long contract, but do certainly have someone from HR an HR background to to check all of that out before you do furlough your workers to make sure all of that doesn't come back to bite you in the future. Yeah, and if somebody is furloughed, then what sort of restrictions are they under in terms of, you know, work they can do or volunteer work they can do and things like that? Um, basically, they shouldn't be doing any work for that employer. So, for example, let's say you have two employments and you're only furloughed from one, it's perfectly fine to do work for the other employer. Um, volunteering also, I was checking up on this just before our, our meeting, and volunteering is allowed, um, but it should be talked about with the employer um, that you're furloughed with, just, just, you know, just, just to make them aware that you're volunteering for some other reason. But th there's no issue from that point of view. As long as you're not doing any work for the employer that has you furloughed, then there's no issue. Yeah, yeah, and that's and as you you were saying before, there that's an issue whenever you're are a director of a company, and and you know you you want to keep the company going. So a lot of this, a lot of the stuff, a lot of legislation and the help there, it comes down to the, the actual personal circumstances of the business owner as 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 much as anything, you know. Yeah, it it definitely comes down to personal circumstances, and I think that's why it's important to to speak it through with somebody. Um, because quite quite often it's you know you can't see the wood for the tree for the trees because you're seeing this this relatively small grant a three month grant about eighteen hundred pounds or whatever it is and that's all you see but yet if you look at the bigger picture and look maybe at the lifetime value of a client and um, what they're going to bring in 
is it better to just carry on working for three months? So it's something that is completely individual to every single director running their company and the conversation should be had um, just to see if you're doing the right thing there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, th I think I think the more people you talk to about it, uh, you know, just about your circumstances and, and get as, as, you know, as much information as possible is, is the important thing. Yeah, definitely. So it's very important. So what, what I'm going to do is um, put John's details below this video and I'll also put my details and I'm sure John would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have around what's been spoken about. And as well as that, I'm more than happy to answer any other questions if we haven't been clear in what we've said or if we haven't um, answered something that you wanted answered, please do reach out to us. But I hope it's been helpful. Um, John, what's your, what's your final bit of advice for people? What's the most important thing in all of this pandemic, you know, for, for your clients or for those who are coming to see you? What's the most important advice you can give them? The, the most important thing I would say is to, to genuinely keep safe. Um, your health is your wealth at the end of the day, and we're, we're seeing that. Um, and not to panic. You know, keep safe. Don't panic and talk. Definitely, definitely lift the phone up. You know, Claire's going to put my mobile number out there. Give us a phone. Um, we'll have a chat. You know, I feel that a lot of a lot of calls from people who aren't even clients who are worried about investments. So listen, it, it doesn't cost anything to talk. It's just a bit of a chat and and that that will help that will help definitely what about yourself tips, yeah. tips from you claire i i've seen that recently too that people are just so willing to have a conversation so don't be afraid to you know to ring or to send an email and ask the question because genuinely we do want to help it might take a little bit longer to get back to you but we will we will get there um please ask the question rather than wonder about it but yeah the, the same advice as you john is really to Remember that we will get through this. Um, remember that it's only short term and that we have got the rest of our lives to work on our businesses, to work on our profit. But for now, I really feel like it's about compassion instead of profit. And in all of it, we need to be kind. We need to realize that there's a lot of people um, really, really struggling out there. So do reach out to them and be kind. Reach out to your neighbors and those who need help as well. and if you need a bit of help or advice, also reach out to us and we will we'll happily help you. Um, so I Brilliant. hope you enjoyed that. John, thank you so much because it's made, it's made oh. things a lot clearer for me. Um, because while our, our industries cross paths on quite a number of things, I mean, I don't have the training that you have, so I've appreciated your input on that as well. Very much face, face first, you know, so I have a lot of business clients, business owners, so brilliant just to get that wee bit of info from you so thank you Claire. yeah so thanks again and we'll hopefully see some of you soon in person rather than on video <laughs>